Hello, my dear students. Welcome to our English session today and to our English video today about the modal verbs. Now let's start to uh, study what are the modal verbs and what uh, are we using them for. Now let's start the modal verbs. We use the modal verbs to express permission, ability, obligation, advice, or criticism. They have only one form, except exceptions uh, have to, as we said uh, at our uh, at our class, changes it from depending on person and tense, like she has to go home. Okay, uh, number three, not three. Models are never followed by the full infinitive. We mean uh, what we mean by full infinitive, like to to and the infinitive form, like I can say. I can to play, it's wrong, or I could to play, it's wrong also, but we can say she can play, she could play the guitar when she was three. So all the modal verbs are followed by the infinitive form of the of the verb, not the full infinitive of the verb. So now let's start with the modal verbs with the ability. We use for the ability we use can, as we said. Like when, when I say the doctor can see you now, Terry can speak Arabic. So here we are talking about the ability to talk about the decisions made about the future ability. Like when I say we can go to the concert tomorrow if you like. Modal verbs for the ability we can also uh, use uh, be able to instead of can or could. Like when I talk about the future, we will say you will be able to take your driving test after a few more lessons if i'm taking if i'm talking about uh, the past we use could or was able to or were able to like when i say tammy could read when she was two years old so i'm talking about the past uh, so i use could not can and i can also say tammy was able to read when she was uh, two years old. And to talk about present, future, or general uh, hypothetical uh, situation, like when I say, I wish I could go with you tomorrow, it's a, a wish. Okay, modal verbs for ability also, we can use could plus have plus past participle of the verb. Okay, like when I say in the past, when I regret something, uh, or I'm talking about a uh, hypothetical situation. Like when I say, I could have bought more expensive shirt, but I didn't want to. So it means I had the ability in the past to do something, but I didn't do that. When I say, I could have uh, hurt him, but I didn't do that. So I had the ability to hurt someone, but I didn't do it. Like when I say, I would love to, it means wish, I wish, or I won't. Like when I say, I would love to be able to go on a round world cruise, but I can't say I would love to can. It's wrong because if you want to use two, you have to use two plus infinitive. Now, modal verbs with permission. If I want to give someone permission or ask someone for permission, I use the modal verbs can, could, or may. Like if I want to go to the bathroom, I would say, can I go to the bathroom? Could I go to the bathroom? May I go to the bathroom? So what's the difference between them? They are, we can all use them for the permission, for asking for a permission. But what's the difference between can, could, or may? May, it's very polite to say may. Could, it's just polite, and can is less polite, okay? Now, let's think about the permissions in the past. So in the past, if I want to say, I, I would ask by allow, allow, as we know, to give someone a permission. Like when I say, I am allowed, or if I'm talking in the past, so I would say, I was allowed to go on a school trip, so it's in the past, or I could go on a, on a school trip. Okay, now, modal verb is for advice. As we, as we uh, took before, we can use should or ought to, to for advice, for giving advice. To ask for and give advice now, for the future or generally, like when I say you should eat less or you ought to eat less fast food.
modal verbs for criticism. So I want to, when I want to blame someone. So like when I say he failed the exam, so I want to blame him. I can't say he should because should is for giving advice, but I want to blame him. So now I have to use should or would have, but plus have and plus participle form of the verb. Like when I say you should or you ought to have studied harder, you should or ought to have studied harder. Now with should now, I'm not giving advice, but I'm blaming someone for doing something or for not doing something. Okay, now modal verbs with obligation. What the meaning of obligations? Obligations means it's very necessary to do something. So we can use must. So must we use it for the laws, for the necessity or the importance uh, of the verb or the action. Like when I say I must remember to get that birthday present. I must go on diet. So it's a necessity. It's very important to do that. Unusual use must for a question we usually do use have, have to. It's as we said before, must, uh, we can use uh, have to or has to instead of must. Like when I say, do I have to be home by midnight? Okay, and obligations, as we said, we can use have to. Like when I say, I have to study for a test tonight or in the future, I can say I will have to be more careful in the future. Okay, modal verbs, obligation, if I want if I want to use obligation in the past, so must and have to and has to. The past form of must and have to and has to is had to, is had to. Okay, like when I say I had to tidy my bedroom last night, mustn't and have to. The negative of must is mustn't, and it's for necessary, uh, or uh, sorry, for necessity. Like when I say you mustn't eat that, it means don't eat that. But when I say the, the, the negative form of have to and has to, we can use don't have to or doesn't have to. But it doesn't mean necessity. It means like when I say you don't have to eat that. It means you can eat, but if you want, but it isn't necessary. So there is a difference between mustn't and don't have to, and doesn't have to. Thank you for listening and see you next video, uh, inshallah.